All right, so I'm going to show you two different ways of rendering, right? One's going to be an additive, not that you can see what I just wrote. So additive versus reductive. And you're going to see this in his slideshow as well, but additive is that kind of traditional way of working. I'm going to kind of start working on this little pusheen as I talk, right? He's a little lamp, actually. He's covered in charcoal now, but he says in my studio. Um, so a pretty basic shape. I'm using the side of a piece of vine charcoal just because it's quicker for my demo purposes. But you could also use a pencil to sketch out, right? There's nothing wrong with gesturing with a piece of vine charcoal, right? And so I am going to be focused on bringing out some of the shading. So more additive techniques, right? The tone of my page is going to be my lightest kind of tone. And I'm going to work to kind of build up the more transitional tone, right? So I have that nice kind of cast shadow on the left hand side. And you guys are going to see an image too about the perspective of like what I see as I'm shading. So additive is just that kind of, you know, it's the way we used to working, kind of clean up those lines. Benefit about using vine charcoal, especially when you're shading, is that it's really easy to push around. So until you kind of get that control with your shading, you know, and you really understand all the elements of light and shadow, it's a great way to kind of get some shading in without feeling too committed, right? So I can soften this up, soften up some of my edges over here. I can also, also go back in and kind of pull that edge back out, right? Because that is really in that kind of highlight area. So, you know, general, general to specific. I'm gonna chunk up this shadow a little bit more. And it's all about finding shapes of tone, right? So when you look on the video, I have this kind of shape of that shadow. This is gonna be my my core shadow, it's the, you know, the majority of the shadow on, on the, the subject. The general tone, like the actual tone, this kind of middle part here is, would be like the normal tone that you would see without like any extreme lighting. And then of course you'd have a highlight, which is usually those lighter parts of the object. Got a little bit of a highlight here, kind of around the one ear and definitely a highlight that kind of comes down on this right hand side, right? So kind of running out of clean fingers. Downsides to working with charcoal, right? So just to get a general idea, now this isn't perfect shading. I have some darker spots up here where there's these like little divots in the ear. I can kind of gently fade out and re-add. So benefits to also working in charcoal is that you can really push and pull the material around I'm gonna go for the two little eyes. I'm gonna get my compressed charcoal for this just to kind of beef up the tone that I see, right? Because that is actually black on my, my little pusheen. I call it a pusheen. It's not what it's called, but. All right. Now, if I had a little something that's sturdier than my thumb, like a blending stump, I would definitely kind of clean those lines up. But for the purpose of demo, right? I can kind of go around and clean that up with an eraser. Working with my kneaded eraser just because I can shape it to whatever I need. Woo! It doesn't pick up too much tone. I can really kind of push and pull that material around. So I have my cast shadow, or excuse me, my core shadow, the like normal middle tone of the object, and my highlights. And of course, I need to add the cast shadows, right? So I have a really complex lighting system. So I'm going to add some of it. I kind of have this like try mainly because my Lighting in my studio is pretty complex. Got a couple different spotlights. So this is probably my darkest shadow. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna go for the compressed charcoal, which I could, mainly because it just makes a huge mess. <laughs> um, this is why I ask you guys to wear like black pants when you come to class, right? This is my darkest shadow. And cast shadow is really just, you know, it's wherever that shadow kind of casts on the surrounding objects. I also have one kind of surrounding it, right? Because I have these two kind of arcs. So I have a more kind of complex lighting system that kind of, they almost look like petals in a way. And one that kind of extends this way. Now, for the most part, I mean, lighting can be really complex. So if you have like multiple shadows and multiple light sources, you guys might be kind of, 
you know, having this situation where you do have very complex shadows, right? And I kind of have another lighter one over here. So I'm gonna build this one up a little bit more, right? So, you know, don't be afraid to kind of tackle those complex shadows. It'll just kind of put more perspective into like what you actually see. Right, so you guys can see that my light source is mainly coming from over here, but just the arrangement of the different spotlights in my studio. You can see I have a lot of different light sources. So one other thing that I'm gonna put in before I kind of move on to my reductive technique is my reflected light. That can be really hard to see, so it's when light bounces off your surface, your ground, and then reflects back onto your object. So it's just a little bit lighter of a tone, kind of stuck in your main shadow, right? So I'm just gonna add that a little bit lighter of a tone, kind of soften that up, put down some of my shadow back in. And this is why I like to work with fine charcoal, is because I can really kind of push and pull. Now, of course, you touch it with any kind of like clean finger and I'm gonna leave a fingerprint. So this is why, of course, you spray fix your drawings when you're done, but then you have that reflected light, right? So I have all my elements of light and shadow here. With the reductive technique, it's when you kind of work in to an already kind of toned surface, right? So I've really layered in a lot of compressed charcoal and vine charcoal in this mixture, right? You guys can see like it's super messy. Um, something I'm gonna ask you guys to do in a warm up, but I'm gonna draw with an eraser. Now this eraser is huge and chunky. It is the one that I had in my studio. So you might see me pull out my, my, um, Needed eraser, sorry, the words escaped me for a second. But I'm just gonna kind of loosely draw in the contour of my shape. Still kind of following the same like shadow system. You guys can see it's about building that tone in slowly. So with this side, notice how I'm using the whole width of the eraser because I'm not trying to pull up too much tone. I'm just gonna start working in that shape. Now this side I'm gonna bear down in a lot more to really get that highlight. And I am working on newsprint, right? So, you know, you can only erase and manipulate newsprint, but so much. So you have to be a little gentle. This is where maybe using your vine charcoal for this to start might be a good idea, just cause it's a little easier to kind of push and pull. You saw how easy it is to get that, that vine charcoal off. So what I'm gonna do too, is I'm gonna kind of erase this tone back in. You guys can start to see my elements of light and shadow here. I'm really gonna try to loosen up that highlight. And it's all about pressure, right? The more you press down on your eraser, the more tone's gonna pull up. So if you want that kind of continuous tone look, really just kind of like, I do like little kind of circle brushes. If I really want a crisp line, really adding a lot of pressure in and then kind of pulling your tone in, right? So I'm gonna kind of get more of this up here. I love using this technique because I think it's a lot of fun. Just a little more time consuming. It's just a different way of kind of working too as far as like processing with your brain, kind of works a different part of the brain in my opinion. Whether that's actually scientifically true is, you know, beyond me, but kind of gets you to think about the possibilities of drawing, right? So as I say with like most of our techniques, we usually don't use them by themselves, right? So you don't only work reductively or you don't only work positive shapes in, you usually kind of work a little bit of everything, right? So I have you do them kind of one at a time just to kind of really practice, but when you're drawing, you know, when you have to clean up a line and you have a lot of tone down, using more of this reductive technique will get you that kind of highlight pulled back in, right? So, you know, you're using these in tangent with other things. They're not just, you know, kind of one-offs by themselves, right? So well, I'm gonna kind of leave the drama a little bit. So he's gonna be more dramatic than my other one. I'm gonna smooth out some of that erasing. Now I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of vine charcoal, kind of put those ear caps back in. I call them ear caps, that is not what they are. They're like little kind of divots in the ear. So I can always put some of my shadows back in. Maybe I lost a little bit of this. And I like, I'm gonna leave the background black on this one. Mainly because I think it kind of works a little nicer. It's more interesting. Maybe this is pushing on a bad day. Right, 
right, so the general idea. Now, realistically, time-wise, I'd kind of like pull more of this back in. I'd get that little bit of that reflected light back in too on the other side. Notice I'm kind of smoothing that out, right, to get that more continuous tone appeal. So maybe I went too heavy-handed with this. Good thing about the reductive is, technique is you definitely have enough tone on your page, so it's more going to be you erasing and kind of continuing to erase than, you know, pulling, putting too much tone back in. So I can take my kneaded eraser too and really crisp up those lines. I love kneaded erasers for this reason. Mainly because I can just switch my edge, get a nice new clean spot. And it's just not as clumsy as those other erasers. Kind of soften that back up. Looks a little different. He's a little bit more face on in this one, but that's okay. All right, so to put down that really, really rich shadow, notice that my background isn't so flat black, so I can always add that shadow back in really kind of give it something to sit on. Super messy. But you can tell that the, even the vibe of this one's just totally different, right? Erase my other kind of shadow line back in where I have that complex lighting system. A little bit in here. Kind of just pull that back in. And we still have a similar version, right? Just really an intense dark lighting, right? So additive techniques where you're actually physically adding your materials to the page and reductive is when you're taking away, usually drawing with an eraser. Um, both are really helpful, right? So when you do this kind of exercise, try both, right? Kind of try them in isolation. A lot of people usually have fun with this and this is a great way to kind of get very dramatic, like, chiaroscuro lighting into your work. Um, so good luck.